Hi, Chaplain John at Neighbors Care. Welcome, loving God, loving people. Uh, we've been uh, beginning the study of the Sermon on the Mount, the inaugural address of the kingdom of the kingdom, uh, Jesus Christ. And um, so today we want to uh, continue uh, where we left off yesterday. And as King Jesus walks us up the steps of this temple of truth, and we'll show you again that uh, the description of that as we walk up these steps together with Jesus, King Jesus, um, we are beginning to learn new attitudes of, the, of kingdom living versus worldly living. Let's walk in faith today that the Holy Spirit will increasingly give us um, first the desire even to possess these beatitudes and then begin to put them in, into action, living out these attitudes in kingdom behaviors and kingdom living. As uh, James wrote in chapter 1, verse 22, 25, said to, uh, to not only be hearers of the word, but doers as well. So we begin to climb up the, uh, the temple of truth yesterday, talking about uh, the first, taking our first steps and being blessed by the king of the kingdom, Jesus Christ. He said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the second step, uh, blessed are those, for they shall be comforted. Again, we want to emphasize the word blessed. He begins his Sermon on the Mount by blessing the people, by blessing you and blessing me today. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. The word makarios means uh, very happy, overflowing happy. Not just happy are we when we have and possess those attitudes, um, but we are more than happy. We are blessed beyond measure. I mean... What a great thing it would be to, to pass from this world, living, being of this world anymore, and being able to pass into living kingdom world, a more spiritual world. And we see the benefits of those today. And the second step, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Again, very happy are those who uh, mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's a promise of the king of the kingdom. And I can tell you again, as I did yesterday from personal experience, that he does comfort us. I have a couple of questions I'd like to run past you uh, as we read these this morning, as we go through this, uh, the, the Beatitudes together. And let's start with the first one. Are we blessing others in Christ, as Christ blesses us? Are we blessing others? as Christ blesses us, building up, encouraging others who are also poor in spirit? Are we encouraging them to step with us into the kingdom of heaven and leave the things of this world behind? Are we doing that? Are we comforting others as Christ comforts us? As we ascend up those stairs of the temple of truth, rather than trying to climb the ladder of false hopes. I would ask you to ask yourself those questions today. Secondly, um, to be doers of the word and not hearers only, is there someone you know, someone you know, who has shown you encouragement or comfort in your life? Go to them today. Call them today and tell that person how thankful you are that they are in your life and for what they have done to help you in your walk um, as a human being on this planet. Call them, text them, whatever, go to them today. That's the best way. Just go to them, give them a big hug and say, thank you for being that person in my life. Is there someone in your life today that you could go and tell that to? So those are the first two attitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
Blessed are those who mourn. Today we're going to take the third step as we climb that uh, step to the, the uh, cathedral, the temple of truth. Today is um, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Whew, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Wow. That's a pretty good inheritance, isn't it? I want to talk about, again, the what does it mean to be meek? You know, sometimes we think of people being meek as like their false meekness, false humility. Oh, I'm not very good. I'm I'm just like that doesn't mean that. It it means the meek don't think any less of themselves. It's just that they think more of other people. Let me repeat that. Meekness or humility is not thinking less of ourselves or putting ourselves down, but it's thinking more about other people. Think about that today. The meek, what does that mean? It means gentle, positive, moral quality of people dealing with other people in a kind manner, with humility and consideration. That's what that word really means. It's a Greek word again, pros, P-R-A-U-S. It, it means to be gentle in the way we deal with other people. Are you and I gentle the way we treat other people? Or are we sometimes rough and gruff? It begins with an attitude of meekness, of humility, that says, I'm not perfect either. Um, I was born in sin, and I will struggle with sin in my entire life. And I need to walk like that. I need to be gentle with people around me. I need to be gentle with my children with my parents, with with those people who speak to me harshly at work or even angry sometimes. I need to be gentle with those people that I run into at the grocery store, even on the freeway. One of the things that I've done uh, lately, because I have a difficult problem with the problem with the people on the freeway at times myself, and I've learned to say, like Jesus did from the cross, Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they don't. Just like when we get frustrated and we get impatient and we do some crazy things sometimes, don't we? We would love to have someone say, Father, forgive John, forgive you today. Wouldn't that be a great thing to be able to do? Ask the Father to begin to place in your own thought process, your own attitudes of meekness and humility. We're no better off than those other people, are we? We've all done probably the same thing or worse, and we want to be known that we can be forgiven. A meekness. What are some people in the Bible uh, that, that were meek? Moses was certainly meek. When the Lord asked him to go back and lead the people out of Israel, he said, I, I can't do that. I'm not even a good speaker. <laughs> I speak like John. <laughs> We, that's humility. It's not about us. It's not about my abilities. It's about what God can do through you and I today. That's humility. And God can also use other people that maybe we are kind of tough with, we're not very gentle with, we're not very kind with. God can use them as well. Let's encourage them to be like that. How about Joseph? Joseph was certainly meek. Joseph had to raise the Son of God, God in the flesh. A tough assignment. How, how do you discipline God? It was a tough assignment, but, but Joseph took it on. And after they moved to Egypt and all that and came back and they talked about uh, going to the temple for the first time, Jesus was 12 years old, you never hear from Joseph again. You never hear anything about Joseph. Humility. But I can assure you that like it says here, that he was blessed. 
He was blessed that he got to have the Son of God, Jesus, God in the flesh, living in his home with him. And now he's in heaven, back with Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful reunion that must have been. Believe me, Joseph is very blessed. He's exceedingly happy because he was meek. Jesus was an example of meekness. He said of his only description of himself that I am meek and lowly in spirit. I'm lowly in spirit. I'm meek. This was our this was Jesus speaking to us. He doesn't come to us with all that uh, kingdom stuff. I'm God. I'm God in the flesh. He didn't. You didn't hear him say those things. Other people said that about him, but he didn't say those things about himself. Why? Because he was meek. He was gentle in spirit. And what shall we inherit? What does God promise us if we if we begin to develop that meekness in our attitude, he promises us that we shall inherit the earth. Inherit the earth? That's quite an inheritance. You know, some people leave a, a, a dowry. I mean, they leave some money. They leave a car that some people leave their house or some property when they die to their children. God here in the flesh, the king of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, says, if you and if you uh, take on the, the attitude of meekness in your life and live out that in your life today and develop that attitude in your life so that those kingdom behaviors come out, you will inherit the earth. There comes a time in the New Testament it talks about in chapter 19 where the new heaven and the new earth come down. The new heaven and the new earth come down. And we're going to inherit that. You and I who develop a, a humility and, and, and our attitude toward other people. So, how does it bless me in the here and now? Because Jesus said in his, in his, um, in his Lord's prayer, in his prayer, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God is now, and it's also in the future. So we can begin to reap some of the benefits of living kingdom life here and following Christ's commandments. You know, there has been some studies done now. What do, what do employers want and need and are looking for more than anything else? It's people that are humble, people that are kind, people that are easy to get along with. You know, there's lots of people that can do a job, and you and I have worked maybe some jobs where the person next to us is just as competent on that job, but, boy, they were really hard to get along with at work. They always had some kind of attitude, some kind of problem, and they didn't mind, you know, voicing it out to you or anybody else who was in earshot. They weren't very nice people. People in, that are hiring people look for people that can work with other folks. Are you that kind of person today? Am I that kind of person? Do people enjoy working with us? Or do they say, oh, I hate to go to work because i got to sit beside John today. <laughs> don't let that happen to you ask the Holy Spirit to give you first the desire to be humble in your spirit to be meek in your spirit so that other people can be lifted up by your behavior and mind today so how do we possess the blessing for ourselves right now? How do you and I possess that? It begins again with our talk with the Lord, doesn't it? The Holy Spirit says he will give us the will and the way, the desire, because in our natural self, we don't even have a, desi a desire to be meek, do we? We want it now. We want it our way. We want it, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm all powerful. I have power. I don't have any power on my own. I only get whatever the Lord has given me, and I can't take credit for that, and neither can you. So it begins with our talking with the Lord in prayer, asking him to give us that behavior, that attitude of meekness. Let's make a decision today to begin today, right now, 
to ask God to help us with that. So the next verse is blessed. Again, we hear that word bless, makarios, overwhelming, overflowing um, happiness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. Wow, we hear that word quite a bit, don't we? And we don't really like that. Oh, he thinks he's a righteous person. He's always got to be right. He's like, that is not what that means. Okay? Don't put people down for wanting to be righteous. To be righteous simply means you and I today want to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Those are three pretty good things to do when we get up in the morning. Say, as I go through my day today, I want to ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. All of them are important. Doing the right thing is good. People benefit. You and I benefit when we do the right thing. When we make right choices, we benefit from that, don't we? And so do others around us when we make the right choices today. But the second thing is at the right time. Timing is everything. You know, Jesus always had a great sense of timing. We've talked about that in one of our previous um, um, videos, but Jesus had perfect timing. And of course he did because he's God in the flesh, but he's saying that we can do the same thing. We can hunger and thirst to be like that. Are we going to be like that every day? No, he doesn't say be perfect and righteous. He said that hunger and thirst for that righteousness. And righteousness means doing the right thing at the right time. Timing is precious. Timing is, is everything. When, we don't, when we're out of time with things and we, we do it in a wrong time, it, it's just not the time to say things to somebody or, or confront them about a situation or, or do something about the situation. But when it's the perfect time, it is so appropriate. It's sort of like a, a proverb that I like that says, uh, a good word, a good word is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Isn't that a beautiful imagery there? You ever sat at a table and, and in the middle of that table there's a big silver bowl and it has all this fresh fruit in there. And these are apples of gold. That's what our words can do for people. If we just prayed to have right words, to use the right word at the right time for the right reason, think how differently our life would be, and especially those people near us. How we could influence their lives if we had the right words at the right time, and then used them for the right reason. Not to make me better, not to make you better, but to build up some other people around us, to help them get through a, 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 a situation in their life that they haven't been able to overcome. The righteousness. And if you hunger and thirst for that, Jesus said, if you, if you just hunger and thirst for that righteousness, you will be blessed. And in the end, you will be filled. You will be filled up. You will feel good. At the end of the day, you'll come home instead of having all those doubts and things. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. You're going to feel real good because it's like that person that you talked to and encouraged today. That person that you corrected in a kind and gentle way, in a loving way. That you steered them back on course so they didn't make that same mistake that you did in life. <laughs> or that I have made in my life. We steered that person clear of that. We did the right thing at the right time for the right reason because we love that person. And we can only love that person if we first love God. That's what that means. So, again, if our attitude is not right, it'll, it will not produce right actions. If it is right, it will produce good actions. Do you see the importance today, after we've just talked, do you see the importance today of possessing this attitude of hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Do you really want to be filled? Do you want to be full of good and wonderful things? God wants to give that to you and me today. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you know, again, somebody in your life 
who has helped you to develop that attitude in your life, go to them today. Call them on the phone, text them, whatever you need to do to get a hold of that person today and say thank you for helping me to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. It's not easy to do that. Jesus knows that. He didn't say in order to get this blessing that we have to always do that because we don't, do we? But he said if you have... If you hunger and thirst and want to do that more than anything else, you will be blessed, and your inheritance is this earth. That's all we have today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday. We're, not going to take, we're going to take tomorrow off, but we'll be back Monday as we continue to climb the steps of the Temple of Truth together in Matthew the Sermon on the Mount, greatest sermon ever preached by Jesus Christ, Son of God, God in the flesh, and our King of the kingdom for those who believe. God bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.